very good morning to you. Fantastic Friday morning. We are glad you're tuned in. This is the Jam 316 Devotional Hour. My name is James Okumu Nikisema Karibu Sana, Psalm 71, verses 14. As for me, I shall always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of, of your saving acts all day long though I know not how to relate to all of them. That's Psalm 71, verses 14 and 15, kicking us off today as we celebrate this brand new day that the Lord has given us. Let's pray as we kick off our time of fellowship together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this new day, for the gift of life, for your masses which are new every morning, for your faithfulness which endures forever. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for bringing us together yet again under the umbrella of family media. We do not take it for granted. We say, Abba, Father, Asante, Sana. I want to thank you for everybody who's tuned in today. Our, fa our Father, I pray that you will strengthen each and every one of us, even as we look to you, Jehovah. Indeed, some may trust in horses and chariots, but we put our trust in the name of the Lord our God. I pray that, my Father, you will strengthen each and every one of us, those who need healing this morning, those who need wisdom, those who need provision. Whatever needs are before us today, Abba Father, I pray that you will meet your children at their point of need in the mighty name of Jesus. King of all glory, there is truly none like you. King of all glory, you alone are worthy of all praise, worthy of all glory, and worthy of all honor. I thank you for your servant who has been ministering to us this week. Even as we wrap up our session for this week, Lord, we thank you and we pray that even the word that he speaks today, we will hear your voice through him. I thank you for Family Media for allowing us to be on air again today. We don't take it for granted. We say in everything we do, my Father, may your name be uplifted and glorified forever. We thank you. We honor you and we give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say the good loud amen this week. We've been talking about excellence and pursuing excellence. Excellence is not an event. Excellence is a journey. Excellence is a lifestyle. It's a way of life. And I pray that even through what we have talked about this week, you and I will make that de deliberate choice to choose the way of excellence, that that is how we will live our lives, that everything we do, we will do excellently. Today, we wrap up by talking about excellence in our work. There's an interesting scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, and verse 29. It says, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. I love that scripture. You know, it's interesting. When pastor mentioned his mechanic on Monday, <laughs> oh my goodness, people have been asking since Monday, every day without fail. You know, tell pastor to send us the number. Tell pastor to send us. I'm sure today he will send me that number. I found that interesting because it seems like today in this generation, people want to do the least. People want to take shortcuts, but they want to be paid the most. People will only do excellent work when you stand there. I don't know if you've ever been to a fundi and you have to stand there for them to do the work they're supposed to do. The moment you leave, they stop your work, they start touching something else. It's just unbelievable. I was reminded of the story of Joseph as I was thinking about excellence in work. Joseph was so excellent that even as the youngest, his father would tell him to give him a report of his brothers. <laughs> Joseph was so excellent that in Potiphar's house, Potiphar left everything under the care of a slave except his wife. You think about that statement. A slave, not a partner, not a relative. In fact, he's a foreigner and a slave, but he's so good. And Potiphar recognized he's so good the blessing of God is over his life. So everything, I live under your charge except my wife. And Joseph honored that. That's what got him in. He was so good, it took him to prison. You think about this. Joseph was so good in prison, he was made in charge of the other prisoners. You think about this. Joseph was so good, Pharaoh left the whole kingdom to him. I mean, I don't know if you see the progression. The Bible says he who's faithful with a little, ataongezewa. He was faithful in a household. 
He was faithful in an institution. He was faithful in a kingdom. Basically, Pharaoh was not running Egypt. Joseph was the one running Egypt. Na hakuiba ata ndururu. Ata kaploti mahali haku jijukulia. That challenged me. The circumstances were not the very best. Oh, my boss. Oh, the working conditions. Joseph had the worst working conditions. But whatever he put his hands to do. My pastor used to tell me, if it is worth doing, it is worth doing well. The question is, if my boss left the company under my care, the boss said everything, I live under your care except my wife. If your boss said the same thing to you, I'm wondering, would the company thrive? I'm a biashara itanguka. I've been asking myself that question the whole of this week. Am I so excellent that if my superiors left everything under my care, the, co the company would blossom, the church would grow, or would we have to shut down after a couple of months? If my standard became everybody's standard in this organization, would this organization be better or would this organization be worse? That's a hard question to think about. I can't wait to hear what Pastor has to share with us today as we talk about excellence in our work. 20316 SMS line, WhatsApp number 0786-316-316. Let me know who you are, where you're tuned in from, and what is the greatest lesson you have learned this week, and what are you going to do about it? And thank you so much for tuning in, looking at some of the messages coming through today. Wanjiko, <laughs> Wanjiko from Kikuyu, how are you doing? Umesema leo, please make sure many salimia. <laughs> Wanjiko, it's good to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in today. Alexi in Vihiga, I see your message here. Uh, Liz Wamboi, always a blessing to have you around. Thank you for tuning in. Martha Ann, how are you doing today? Karibu sana. Millicent all the way from Mombasa. It is good to hear from you today. Elijah, the graphic designer. Karibu sana. James, my namesake from Likoni, Mombasa. It's good to hear from you. Victor from Kware is also listening. Wagoi from South Sea. Ohoro, how are you doing today? Thank you so much. <clears throat> Wangoi is saying, that good and honest mechanics are so hard to come by in Kenya. <laughs> you guys have really pressed this mechanic thing. I, Gloria from uh, Malawi, you are tuned in today. Uh, let me see if the other international crew, uh, they are there. Phyllis Ndongo from Saudi Arabia. Nimekuona hapa. Thank you so much. Wondering if Roy has sent a message today. Joyce in Uganda is listening in. Good to have you on board. And uh, we have our head ushers who are always there. Joe and Margaret in Nakuru, always a blessing to hear from you. Keep texting in on 20316 for SMS and WhatsApp is 0786-316-316. And I'm asking you, what's the greatest lesson you have learned this week? Pastor Ondachi, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm very fine. Karibu sana, good to have you. Sante sana. I'm so privileged. Actually, as we speak, I'm sending you the mechanics number. Ah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, let's sort out this thing right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I feel like the week has gone so fast, eh? It really has. I've really <laughs> had a great time. Thank you so much for inviting me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, yes. Pastor, remind us yes. one or two things we talked about yesterday. Yesterday was very, very uplifting for me. We talked about excellence in our worship. Yes. Uh, we talked about uh, the, the energy, that the priority that we bring to God. We talked about worship uh, mm. easily seen, most easily seen as, uh, or best seen as a relationship between two lovers. Yeah. People who know how to prioritize one another, who know how to value each other, who listen to each other intently, and who are sensitive mm. to one another. Mm. We quoted Psalms 42 that the psalmist said, As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul thirsts for the Lord. Yes. Then he asks, when can I go to be with God? He actually missed God with his emotions. That was just totally amazing. Wow. We also talked about Psalms 37 verse 4 that said, if we delight ourselves in the Lord, then God makes our desires like his. Mm -hmm. We begin to feel the same, to think the same, to want to be at the same place with God. 
Uh, then uh, finally, I recommended a book by James Parker, yeah. J.I. Parker, about knowing God and what you can do to know God. I really highly recommend that book. It's, it's, it's a beautiful book that talks about people who know God. They have great thoughts about God. Mm. They have great energy for God. They have great boldness for God. And they have great intimacy with God. Wow. That was yesterday's discussion. Awesome. That's a good Very summary exciting. right there. So, Pastor, today we Thank talk you. about excellence in our work. And I think yes. from the comments that have come in about your mechanic, we can already tell <laughs> this is an area where, <laughs> men, we need to pull up our socks. Yes. We need to pull up our socks. Sometimes I hear people say, I'd rather do business with somebody in the world than a believer. I've also had people yeah. say, I'd rather hire somebody from the world than a believer. Because believers don't want to do the work. They expect grace and a paycheck at the end of the month. And I thought, that's such yeah. a bad testimony. I don't know where you want yes. to kick us off as we talk about excellence in our work. Let's talk about the mechanic. Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you something about the mechanic. He is so passionate about cars um, mm -hmm. that for him, it's not about the money. And the funny thing about this mechanic is how much money chases him. Wow. He doesn't chase the money. He will not make money the fuss. Yeah. He is passionate about your car. And if the problem is too simple, he does not see the need to, to, to charge you. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about him. He will diagnose the problem, will get, tell you what the problem is, and send you off. And I've sent people there. The first time I was sent to him, it felt like we've known each other for years because his people index is so high oh. that you know he's very relational very relational and you feel there are lines and lines of people waiting there to see him and he is so passionate about cars you want to start him off talk to him talk about, to him cars. about cars. cars yeah so the, the first thing about it is that people who don't chase money somehow money chases them mm -hmm. <laughs> Very and, true. And, and people who chase money, somehow money flies away. And that is exactly what the Bible says in um, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 5. Mm -hmm. That money has a way of developing wings and flying off when you last after it. Mm. It never, ever becomes enough. However, uh, Pastor, um, we cannot talk about money, with, uh, about, about work, without talking about purpose. Purpose, yes. That... Um, money is so closely connected to our purpose mm -hmm. and what we do for a living mm -hmm. so that work is not that which we do to get money mm -hmm. work is that which we do to express our purpose wow and i think uh when we tap into that then we realize you can always do something that you really enjoy that mm -hmm. thing which brings you to work every morning that thing which you, you find joy in doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. the late Dr. Miles Monroe, there's a quote he said that I really like. Dr. Miles Monroe said, it's not hard work that makes us tired. It is wrong work. Ah. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> Very true. <laughs> you know, when you, when you reach home and you're so tired, you're upset. Yes. You think everybody in the office is ugly. You think life is terrible. <laughs> You, you don't want to go to work the next day. Yes. It's because it's very likely that it's wrong work. Uh, and and there's a research that showed that most heart attacks mm. actually happen on Monday morning. Mm. And, uh, and the reason is that you wake up and then you think you have to go to work again. Yes, yes. And most people at that point just get a heart attack and die. You mm. don't want to go. But because it pays you, then you have to go. And mm. can you imagine... You go to work, and the, the greatest thing you're looking forward to is lunchtime, and then you're looking forward to the four o'clock tea break. And yes. Then you go home. <laughs> yes. Your work is nothing to talk about. Your colleagues are no people to talk about. You just are looking forward to the time when you go home and do something that you finally enjoy. But because it pays you money, you go. I cannot imagine <clears throat> anything more depressing than mm -hmm. that. And no wonder then most people give 50 percent 40 percent 30 percent to work yeah because then it, it failed to express god's purpose through us and i think especially for believers this must be a question we highly engage god on mm -hmm. uh, what am i meant to do what are my gifts what's my purpose in this world and how can i do it with all my might and then through that then allow it to 
bring us income because we do need an income. Mm. But uh, I just find that in many ways we are completely convoluted when it comes to excellence in our work. Wow. It must be because we do not see it as expressing a vehicle to express our purpose. Very true. And, and you know, Pastor, even as you say that, you know, and uh, for a good number of people, that may not be where they are, where you, you've even figured out what you like and what your purpose is. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so whatever is available is what you're doing. But even with yeah. that, you know, we have to be at a place where, like Joseph, you know, being a slave or being a prisoner didn't make any difference. Whatever he put his yeah. hands to do, he did it so well. God blessed it. Yeah. I have a friend of mine who used to work. In fact, I have two friends of mine. Similar story. One used to work mm. as a, she used to work in a gymnasium. Yeah. And she would be the ones to give the clients their towels and to clean up after them. And the gym would open at five in the morning, so meaning she would have to be there by four. Another friend mm. of mine was a waiter. Now, both of mm. them in their service, they were so excellent. Mm. This lady, mm. one day, she's serving clients at the gym and just cleaning up after them. And one gentleman mm. says, you know, I've been coming to this gym for quite a number of months, and I always find mm. you here. You're always excellent mm. in the way that you do your work. And she mm. gave him, uh, he gave her his card. And he says, if you ever need mm. another job, call me. And she called. Mm. And she was given another wow. job, which is the job she is doing wow. currently. My I friend, the waiter, you know, one day he's serving this person and this person says, you know, I come here for breakfast every other day. And for some reason, you're always the one who serves me and your service, mm -hmm. your attitude, excellent. And he removes a card and he says, if you need another job, call me. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened. And so I think sometimes people need to recognize wow. that we lose out on opportunities because the little that we've been given we don't do it seriously. We have no we passion. Yeah. We, we're just waiting yeah. for four o'clock to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Take tea. <laughs> yes. And then go home. Yes. Actually, Pastor, you're, you're reminding me of something seriously fundamental. Mm -hmm. Because of our poverty lines, because of so many people who don't have work. Yeah. It is easy to say that, you know, 50% of Kenyans don't have any gainful employment, so we really don't have any choice mm -hmm. uh, half our people live under the poverty line and so i just have to go and do this but there's something a lot more fundamental and that fundamental thing is that the chief purpose of our existence is to please god yes and to worship him. oh yes and 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 in that regard then we are all on equal and flat ground mm. the apostle paul said whatever you do mm. do it as if for the lord wow now, that's where Joseph and Daniel make a difference for all of us. Yes. Because we don't have to necessarily find our sweet spot in whatever we are doing. Perhaps during our training or half through our work, something may be placed in front of us that we don't really like. Like they found themselves in a very unfortunate circumstance. Mm. But the attitude that Paul said that is cross-cutting is whatever it is, do it as if it is God who is your boss. Yeah. And you're just reminding me of something else. I'm attending, a, <clears throat> there's a church and politics a yes. conference going on at the moment. Yes. <clears throat> and I'm attending that conference, Pastor. And uh, there's a moderator yesterday who said something very amazing. She said that she passed by Mombasa Airport and she walked to the toilet. Mm -hmm. And the toilet was so exceptionally clean mm. that when she was leaving, she was astonished and shocked that a public toilet can be so clean. Yeah. She went and she, she found the lady who cleans the toilet and she commended her. Yeah. And the lady said, thank you. But when she was about to board her flight, she thought, wait, I'm a government official. Mm. It's not enough for me to privately tell this lady thank you. Yeah. So she wrote a note to her supervisor and mm -hmm. said, I've come into this toilet and I am so impressed about its cleanliness. I want to commend this lady. Mm -hmm. And the toilet cleaner was given a promotion. Wow. Imagine. You know, that that is an example of whatever you do. Yes. Do it not for men. Do it as if for the Lord. Yes. And you see that the thing is, I think that our sights are so low. We want to impress a person. Mm -hmm. But the true person to, to perform in front of that audience of one, we talked about it this, this week, is God. Yeah. And God is the promoter of what we do. The mm -hmm. thing is, we are so bent on impressing people, we forget about impressing God. Yeah who gives us our purpose. And and God 
is able to give us delight because it is God who will remind us, sweep under the carpet. Mm. It is God who will tell us, clean all the cups. Mm. It's God who will tell us, stay until the end of the day. Yes. It's God who will tell us, finish your tasks for the day. Don't do it halfway. It is God who tells us those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it is God who told Joseph, do the job well. Yeah. Because God knew where he was taking him in the end. And when God is able to whisper that to us, you know, mm -hmm. then we are able to excel and go far. I just wanted to write on what you are saying about wow. excellence. I think that is yeah. that is that is an amazing story because, I mean, a toilet cleaner. You know, my pastor used to tell me, Pastor Don used to tell us eh, mm. that if you are a road sweeper, be yes. the best road sweeper that you can be. <laughs> that when people yes. pass on that road, they have something yeah. to say about the person who swept that road because they have never yeah. seen a road that has been swept that well. You know, and, and yes. what you're saying just goes to bring across the point that it's not the nature of the work. Because sometimes we wait for our dream job, then we will do it well. But I've realized yes. if the job that you're doing now, you're not doing well, even your dream job, yes. you will not do it well. You because not it's not it about well. the job, it's yeah. about your attitude. Exactly. Yeah. I totally, totally agree with you. And it touches me and moves me faster that <laughs> The, the original job offer in the Garden of Eden mm. never never paid. Yes. <laughs> it never paid money. It just said that God put Adam in the garden and he told him to work it mm. and improve it. In fact, he told him, make it better, mm -hmm. improve it. And that has everything to do with attitude. Yes. That, uh, you know what you're saying about being left for uh, a position. Uh, and then your boss walks away. Yeah. It's that attitude that says, you know, improve this. There's once I told um, our staff team in, in one of the churches I used to work, work in, mm. I, I asked our staff team at random, could you stand up and describe to me exactly what your job description is uh -huh. according to, <laughs> to your employment letter? Yeah. And I realized that most of them, when they got their employment letters, they went to the to, to, to the page of how much are they being paid. Oh. <laughs> but but you, don't, the bottom you, line. Don't go to, you go to the bottom line to see how much are they paying me. But a proper study of what you are meant to do. Now, half of them got it. Not word perfect, but in general terms. Mm. But, I, but then we asked later after that, what is your plan for improving on that? Uh -huh. What is your plan on improving? Proving on that because it is only then that we get the genesis definition mm. that uh, are you planning after one year or two years to be two times better than you are today and Very most true. people are happy to maintain Very you know true. we are happy to keep within those working hours we are happy to see that as long as the boss is not watching me as long as my supervisor is not watching me mm -hmm. then i'll do the right thing but the moment you leave everything actually stops and, and I think there is a general attitude people have towards work that delivers on the mediocre. Yes. No wonder we can talk about a mechanic. No wonder we can talk about a lady who cleans a toilet mm -hmm. and a person who does this to improve it. No wonder they catch our attention yeah. because those kinds of people are so few. And when we see them, we cannot fail to promote them. Mm. You know, you've mentioned the church yeah. staff, Pastor, and sometimes I challenge uh, the staff at our church and I ask mm. them, you know, because sometimes I also find that there's also a attitude because you're working in a church. Yes. You know, you don't have to be that professional. You don't have to be that excellent. And I keep mm. asking them, you know, as the administrator of the church, can one of these big corporations try to poach you because you're so good at what you do that they're thinking that guy who's the administrator of that church, we want him in this organization. You know, you as a receptionist, oh, wow. you know, can, wow. can, can some of the big corporations in this country actually come and poach you? Or if you got a job there, would they commend your work or they will say you need to go back to school because you're so mediocre <laughs> in what you're doing? Because sometimes I find that when it comes to the things of God, we give mm -hmm. leftovers instead of giving our very best.
Oh, and and and, and that's, that's an attitude. So yeah. That's an attitude that needs to change. It's six thirty, giving you an opportunity to ask any questions today. Two zero three sixteen SMS line WhatsApp number zero seven eight six three sixteen three sixteen. Number ya meka niki nime pewa kama unataka unipi unipi unitumi a message nita kufua dia your number <laughs> because I don't want to share it on the air. So if you want that number, let yes. me know. But tell me what 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 in regards to what we are talking about today. You know, because recognize we are not talking about excellence in a job. It's excellence in work. Work. Yes. Difference between job and work. Yeah? The work you do, whether it is in your house, whether it is in the community, whether it is... the work, How excellent are you in the work that you are doing? It is the Jam 316 devotional. I'm having my cup of gashai. Eden tea, finest garden tea. Umekunyo gashai ya subui? Ama hauja kunyo gashai. If you haven't taken some tea, try out some Eden tea. Eden green tea, Eden purple tea, Eden lemon tea, Eden ginger tea, and Eden premium tea. Available at the supermarkets, affordable prices, excellent packaging. We're talking about excellence this week. In the excellent. <laughs> Eden tea the excellent. The packaging is excellent. You know, the tea bags are excellent. You know, I come from that side where anytime is tea time. Where I come from, you know, so I value tea. And there are some tea bags. You put a tea bag and you wonder where did it go? Nothing is changing. You know, when I imagine baridi, Eden tea is not like that. The moment it hits the hot water, my friend, the richness in color, the aroma, oh my goodness. And Frank, it's so good I use a tea bag twice. That's how good it is. You know, the color and the taste is so rich. You can actually make two cups out of one tea bag. So, my friend, what an easy tea bag thing is nakusumbua sumbo na kuwa stressed and you need to enjoy a nice cup of tea. Go the Eden tea way because when they say it's the finest garden tea. It's not just a tagline. They mean what they say, and they say what they mean. Eden Tea is reminding us. Moliona jana kumefungua na makafiu. Pande ya nyanza and western and all that. COVID is still with us, and Eden Tea cares for you and I. And they're reminding us, let's remain vigilant. Put on your face mask. Wash your hands with soap and running water. Maintain interpersonal distance. Together we will fight and win this fight against the coronavirus. So, my friend, today's Friday. Grab some Eden Tea from the supermarket. Try it out this weekend. I know you will be blessed. Thank you for all the SMSs coming in. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Yes, it is a challenge. Uh, Beatrice from Nakuru, you say, Pastor, excellence really elevates. The mechanic is a good lesson. Little is much when God is in it. That is very, very good. Pastors, I'm enjoying the devotion uh, 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 as I go to work. Thank you so much for tuning in. Pastor, back to you as we continue with t talking talking about uh, about work. Pastor, if somebody would ask, how do I develop the attitude and the excellence in work? Mm. Um, it's a beautiful question. And I think where we start off is making the difference between a job mm. and work. Yes. Because if, 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 you're, if you're looking for a job, then you get the attitude of I have to come from Oshago, to come to Nairobi, <laughs> to work in an office, yes. to, to sit at a beautiful desk like James Okumu is doing <laughs> and get paid at the end of the month. Yes. But if you're talking about work and industry, that is something that all of us have from God. Mm. And I have to say this, that um, uh, a friend of mine, he's a German, he told me that there's a, a, a tradition in Germany, which I, I believe that we must all emulate that there is a tradition among the Germans that every man must teach his son a skill. Wow. That has got nothing to do with their training. What? Nothing. Because every person has got something they know how to do with their hands. And you'll be surprised how this developed nation becomes such a developed nation because they don't depend on what their training will give them they depend on what their dad will teach them oh my and goodness. this is whether your dad is divorced or separated whatever he is uh but it's also what what do we inherit from our parents you know what do they teach us and so you'll find somebody's an engineer but at the same time they are a really good carpenter because the dad was a carpenter yeah they know something to do with their own hands and perhaps I can throw this out as a challenge for Father's Day, which is coming on yes, Sunday. Yes, Father's Day is on Sunday. That, 
on Sunday that perhaps you should consider what are you teaching your son or your daughter? What are you passing wow. on to them that has got nothing to do with their training? So that during COVID times when when people don't cannot go to that one office anymore, what can they do for an income? Yes. And you see the the, the, the idea of uh, of of purpose is since purpose is God given, there has to be something that we can improve on mm. about ourselves. Mm. There has to be something we can start doing that. Uh, you know, there's no work that is worth looking down on. Anything is exciting when it is done with excellence. Yeah. Even cleaning toilets, like we are oh, saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see the problem is that some people say, this is below me. I cannot do this. You cannot make me wait on tables. I cannot be a waiter. Yeah. You know, you don't know that uh, I have a diploma. <laughs> so why, why should I clean tables? Yes. But, you know, uh, until about 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, when, when, when the Java string of restaurants came, we used to look down on waiters. Mm -hmm. Until Java came and they trained waiters differently, mm -hmm. they actually started to demand that a waiter needs uh, to have a, like a, a, a higher diploma in mm. school. And before that, it used to be those jobs that nobody wants. Yeah. You know, if somebody calls you a waiter, they have a different <laughs> kind <laughs> and to can. Until you, 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 know, you go to this restaurant and the waiter speaks very good English, they're very presentable, they work very excellently. They speak to you very politely. Then it dignified that job. Mm. So I think it all starts with a sense of personal discipline. Okay. It also starts with an attitude to hard work. And we will always return for believers yeah. to an attitude towards God. Um, there's one of my bosses, again, who said that if you do things halfway, anywhere, it is an indicator of spiritual immaturity. Ooh, that's a deep one. Yeah, he said, I cannot see your quiet time, but I can tell that you and God are not connecting completely. Wow. Because you have an attitude of mediocrity. And he said, you know, it, it all springs from that relationship. And she kept saying, I can't see where you and God are meeting personally, mm. but your fruit, in terms of what you do, you're running away from work at two, mm -hmm. we give you tasks you know, you don't complete it. Mm -hmm. You don't seem to be concentrating. You start something. Uh, you, you don't do. It, you don't give it your whole effort. Yeah. You cannot tell me then that you and God are so tight. You know, because God will challenge you yes. to go and complete the task. You know, uh, Pastor, my wife and I are reading. I've just finished reading through the Book of Exodus, mm -hmm. and we noticed something about Moses. The instruction God gave Moses about the tabernacle yeah. was so detailed. In yes. fact, it is that part of the Bible that people usually call boring. Mm. <laughs> the, wash, the wash basin, <clears throat> the forks, the what, the measurements for this and everything else. And there are chapters after chapters dedicated to the details of building, uh, of making a tabernacle. Yeah. And you wonder why the fuss. Mm -hmm. And we were saying, it must be that God is very detailed. That is the first thing we notice. Very true. But the second thing we notice is that when it was finished, Moses went to inspect the work. Ah. And he inspected the work he had given to so many people to do. And after Moses had examined everything, then the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Wow. And, and, and for me, it told me, one, God is a fussy employer. Mm -hmm. Moses was a fussy employer. <laughs> and, and only when the work fitted what, Mos what God had instructed Moses, yes. did God's glory fill the tabernacle. God loves work that is done excellently. Mm -hmm. He loves it. Because then it befits him. And you, you remember in the book of Haggai, when they built a second tabernacle, mm -hmm. it was nothing like the first one. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it reflected the ineptness of their worship. It reflected the fact that they, they were not paying attention to that tabernacle. They were mm. actually busy building their own palatial homes. Yes. And they had neglected the temple of God. And yes. as I told them, this, the way this temple of God looks dilapidated is an indicator of your spiritual attitude towards God. Wow. So it all starts with how we view God. And when we view God the way we're supposed to view Him, our work reflects excellence because we are doing it for God. But to answer the question, it starts with God. It starts with God. There's another question here. Uh, says, is it recommended to teach others your craft and the inner source that makes you excellent? 
Will it make you less competitive in the marketplace? <laughs> the, the simple answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> the more you give to others, the yes. more you will. It's just yes. the law of life. It is the law of God and the law of life. Mm. Uh, you will create room for yourself. You know the scripture you quoted from Proverbs, do you see a man's skill that's what he does? Yeah. You will stand before kings. When you open doors for others and you train others, mm. life and God have a way of opening greater doors for us. Very true. Always valued more for it. It is people who try to be territorial and to withhold from training others mm. who work themselves out of a job. Mm. I agree. Yeah. And not, I've, I've seen not it. The opposite. I've seen it in the lives of many yeah. people. I love that when we began this conversation on Monday, you said yeah. that excellence is not a spiritual gift. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because sometimes we look at people and mm. our assumption is it's because they're gifted. You know, it's yeah. because they're gifted yeah. in what they do. You know, it's just that, mm. yeah. So I can't compare myself with them because they're gifted. Mm. You know, Pastor, I'm, uh, back in the day, I used to play basketball. I'm not a football guy. I'm a basketball guy. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, mm -hmm. you know, when I used to play basketball in high school, I also played basketball in the, in the National League. You know, one mm -hmm. of the ba basketball icons wow. I, used, I used to look at was Michael Jordan. And for, 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 right. for me, he has to be the greatest player ever. And I was just watching his yeah. documentary, and I realized, mm -hmm. okay, the guy was gifted, but the guy worked the hardest. Oh, his work! He would be amazing. he would be in the gym an hour before everybody else, and after everybody yeah. else left, he was there for another hour. And you're thinking, no wonder then he was excellent in his craft because he focused <laughs> yes. on it. He would not give himself permission to be mediocre when others are sleeping yes. he is in the gym working yes. out he is trying out different things and i think we need to get that attitude where our work is concerned that if we don't put ourselves to task if we don't put yes. in the hard work then we yes. can't be excellent no no we can't and if you notice anything or any person who's extraordinary mm -hmm. and you follow them and this is a company or this is a person if you follow the trait of an extraordinary company or the trait of an extraordinary person, mm. you'll always discover something extra. Yes. They do. <laughs> yes. There is something extra. That is what makes them extraordinary because there is something extra mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt. Very true. They, are, they, are, they don't uh, feature in the, in, the, in, the, in the normal realm mm -hmm. uh, to, to be extraordinary. No, it's always the fruit of amazing hard work that 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 makes people extraordinary you know pastor i read something the other day that really challenged me and this person was saying if you become deliberate and just give mm. an extra hour to what mm. you do just an extra hour mm. every day or even an extra 15 20 mm. minutes you know consistently within a very mm. short time you will actually become an authority in that field because the world is filled with mediocrity. No one is willing to put in the extra mile. And so if you decide to just put in, just go a notch higher, just add another hour, you know, an, an, yeah. a, an hour to think about what you're doing and how you can do it better. There was a, a story I read, Pastor, of this guy mm -hmm. who owned a shop, mm -hmm. a small shop, and this shop mm -hmm. grew to become you know a chain of stores and 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 when i was mm. reading his story he said that every week he would look at his sales what sold the most and he would ask himself mm -hmm. how can i make this better every week he would just take an hour mm. two hours at the end of the week and look at this is how i performed this week and he would ask what can i do better what can i remove mm -hmm. what can i add what slight mm. change slight changes can i do you know to make it mm. better and he would get different mm. ideas and he would write them down and he would begin to implement. He realized, okay, yes. child, parents are coming into my shop with children, mm -hmm. but I don't have anything for children. What if I mm -hmm. set up one of the corners with crayons and pieces wow. of paper that when the parents are mm. shopping, the kids are busy? The children can yes. play, yes. And what he realized when he did that, because the children wanted to stay longer, the parents had mm -hmm. to stay longer, and the parents did more <laughs> shopping. 
Wow. Just small ideas, small things. But it's because he was yeah. deliberately trying to find out, how can I do better? Many yeah. of us don't do that. Yes, hmm. yes, yes. And, and many of us see hard work as an enemy. That is very, very unfortunate. Yes. Um, and I don't know, Pastor, what I told you about this, but I'm in the middle of writing my second book. Mm -hmm. And when I wrote my first book, after I was very satisfied with it and I was very pleased, and I told the designer, you, you can close the book now, and we had paid the designer. Yeah. Until I got a, a second editor, somebody told me, uh, why don't you just get a second person to look through the book? Mm -hmm. And then they found two typographical errors. Yeah. They tore the script up, and they said it cannot go. Wow. Just two? It cannot go just two out of a whole book they <laughs> tore it up and they said it cannot go and i said no they're just two errors they said you know you know pastor a book is your personality in print oh it, it is not excellent you will always be viewed as less than excellent wow and we had to redo it again and check for more typos it went through a third editor uh -huh. and we paid double for for that work um and now, uh, uh, every time somebody picks up that book, they always write back to me or call me and tell me it is so well done. Mm. And I have so many people to thank for pushing me really hard. Now for this second one, I'm in trouble. Now somebody telling me, do a 10 eye test. Wow. <laughs> you have to top up the first one. And you see, until we see hard work as a friend, uh -huh. we will never ever perform excellently Very because true. most people think that if, if i have to work too hard it can't be god mm. because if it is god mm. perhaps it should be easy yeah i don't know who communicated that to us but you know <laughs> if you have to work too hard how are you going to give a testimony that it is god mm. who helped you you know and i think that thing messes us up a lot because then we somehow advocate laziness as a spiritual gift and it is oh my not. goodness <laughs> uh, god does not want us to be in a space where he does everything and we do nothing mm. so that we can go in front of a church congregation and say guess what i was just sitting there i was doing nothing and somebody walked up to me and they gave me a million shillings mm. glory to god you know it, it doesn't work like that Very god true. really would like us to work really hard and through that then bring glory and praise to his name out of excellence wow. that's how it comes now once had yeah. to, i once had td jake saying that you can't put a price tag on quality. Quality sets its own price tag, you know. And, ah, and, wow. and, and, and he said, you know, there are certain brands that are associated with quality. They, their oh. items never go on sale. Never. Never. <laughs> you don't bargain. You know, if you go to yes. some of those shops and try to bargain, they will tell you, my friend, uh, then you need to look for another price. <laughs> You know, it, it's either you can afford it or you can't afford it. Why? Because oh, of can. the workmanship and the quality, you know. And, and, and it's interesting because many of us aspire to have those things because if I have a quality uh, certain brand, then it says something about me. But we never flip it yeah. to ask ourselves, am I giving the same kind, the same kind of quality? There's a comment here from Professor Moroki. Professor Moroki says, good morning, James. I've been an ardent fan of Radio 316 since its inception in the late 1990s or early 2000s. I've also been your silent fan. And this other funny guy who came back after seven or eight years, that's Mike on the mic. <laughs> you see, I'm excited <laughs> to hear my former pastor at Mamlaka Hill Chapel, uh, Pastor Ondachi, a man of excellence. That's an excellent topic and a conversation of men of excellence. Professor Moroki, thank uh, you so much uh, for that. Mm. Thank you. Pastor, our time is up. Mm. Uh, how do you wow. want to wrap this up? And then today I'm the one praying for you. Oh, thank you very, very much. Yes. I just want to thank you for picking this topic because it is so amazing mm -hmm. to, to, to talk about. And yes. To know that, of course, we can't exhaust every topic. But I think that our work ethic as a nation mm. Uh, needs a lot of improvement. Our attitude towards God and towards work, it really needs to to improve. And I yes. like, I really like the the difference you've said about. Uh, I was a little worried when we were starting because I thought if we're going to talk about work and 50% of our country has no job, how are you going to tackle this topic? Yeah. But really, it's not about the job in the office. No. Really, it's about our 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 work ethic towards God. It's yeah. that which we can do with our hands. Yes. When God says. What is that you have in your hands? And you'll discover that 
no job is too small to do and mm. when you do it excellently it catches god's attention and god will make sure that he sweats the money issue for us if we work excellently yes so i just want to say today as we conclude that whatever you do do it as with all your might as if you're working for the lord and not for men mm. and god is alive to promoting us uh, the bible reminds us that promotion does not come from the east or from the west promotion comes from the lord yes and i want to pray for anyone who's been listening to us this week that may they work so hard that they will get a promotion mm. that somebody will notice the excellence with which they work remove your attention from human beings yeah and tell god lord i'd like to work for you today today i want to do this for your sake mm. and because of that then may the lord lift you up awesome pastor what i leo as we wrap up our session for today you. heavenly father thank i you thank you for your servant who's been diligent and excellent this week to minister to us my father lord and to encourage us through your word i want to thank you for his family lord who have been supporting him in the work that you have called him to do i want to thank you lord for the church where he is pastoring and the people that he is raising up in the kingdom of god and lord we say thank you abba father i pray that you will continue to use him for your glory that you will continue my father to give him wisdom and insight as he teaches and raises up disciples in the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you for his writing, my father. Continue to give him insight that he can pen down into more books that can be insightful and encouraging to those who read them. I pray that, Lord, you will meet him at his point of need, that, my father, you will extend and enlarge his borders even as he remains faithful to the call of God over his life. Father, we thank you for the blessing that he has been to us this week, and we say, Lord, in equal measure, my father, may you also bless him exceedingly abundantly, far above anything he could ask, think, or even imagine. We thank you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Asante Sana for this privilege. I'm so grateful. Awesome. May God bless you and your team as well. Thank you very much. Kuna watu hapa wana campaign ni kuongeze wiki ingine. We will see. I'm sure we will call you back again. I mean, it's been such a great week. We thank the Lord. It has. My I time is up for the devotional much. hour today, but today is Friday. Friday na kuaga siku ya excellent giving. <laughs> <laughs> Fridays is when I challenge you to give towards this ministry because family media does not depend on advertisers. You know, he who he who pays the bills sometimes tends to want to say what you will say and what you should not say. And so for the 22 years family media has been on air, we greatly depend on our partners and God has been faithful to connect us with people like you who support this ministry. The much you have, the little you have, as you send it in, we are able to keep Jesus on the air. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so every Friday, I remind you and I challenge you to give something towards this ministry. If this show is a blessing to you, every morning we gather together, then support this show that we may continue to do what we are doing. m -Pesa pay bill number 316, 316, account name TBN Family Media. Thank you so much for your giving over the months, over the years. May the Lord continue to bless you. In the coming hour, Wanaume Mkai Karibu will be having a conversation uh, with the men on Manap. That's coming up shortly. For this and more of our shows, log on to www.familymediaonline.com to enjoy a wide variety of programs from current affairs to testimonials and features, pastoral and inspirational shows, kids entertainment, and so so much more. Also stream live on www.familymedia.tv.